Apple Vision Pro, can it really buck the trend of augmented reality flops? Apple's new mixed reality glasses launched with plenty of hype. But history suggests the device might face an uphill battle, says Chris Stokel Walker. For part two. Soon cities were filled with smartphone-wielding fans, and even on-duty police officers on occasion, chasing down the virtual characters, raising fears that it was increasing the incidence of fatal accidents on busy roads. Yet enthusiasm for the game soon fizzled out. Much our technology struggles to connect with ordinary people or only connects for a fleeting moment, as a fad or a game, says Hicks. Given the price point of Apple's offering, that's unlikely to change. But Pan believes that two key developments in the underlying technology behind such glasses mean Apple stands a better chance of success now than it ever has before. The tracking technology that figures out where the goggles wearer is in the world, and overlays the graphical interface in the right place, has advanced to the point of being able to do it in real time, she says. And the graphics display technology has also sped up, meaning there's less lag between actions. Apple claims its R1 computer chip embedded within the device can stream new images within 12 milliseconds, eight times faster than the blink of an eye. Yet there's still the problem of the gap between the reality and the hype, or hope, we have for how these devices will change our lives. I think a big part of it comes down to the fact that often plays like these get sold as new ambitious experiences, which often sends them far afield to where modern day use cases actually are, says Smith. Smith reckons Apple presented the Vision Pro smartly by showing use cases for the device that echoed how people interact with computers, rather than pie-in-the-sky potential. Apple's own website shows people browsing the internet and watching a video without the need for screens. Showing Excel might seem a little boring, but it sets a baseline for what this could be that doesn't aim for the rafters, he adds. With its high price, which is nearly five times as much, when adjusted for inflation, as the first iPhone went on sale for in 2007, Apple may still struggle to convince many users to try it. Some technology commentators suggest that Apple should target the first version of the Vision Pro at specialist users, such as architects, who could use the augmented reality to imagine what a building might look like in situ. Future generations of the device, when the price comes down, thanks to technological advances, could be targeted more at mainstream users. Aiming for a niche audience is the route that Apple's rivals Microsoft went down when it released its own mixed reality headset, the HoloLens, in 2016. It didn't set the world on fire, selling 300,000 devices since launch, according to analysts IDC. For context, one analyst told the BBC that they believe Apple could sell up to 150,000 of its Vision Pro headsets in its first year on sale. However, what the HoloLens lacks in quantity of users, it is made up for in the way it has tried to make itself useful. The technology is being used to aid surgeons conducting complicated procedures on the brain and to assist in bowel cancer surgery. It has found uses among engineering firms and recently Microsoft announced a $21.9 billion, 15.9 billion pound, deal to supply 120,000 headsets to the US Army. But there have been some concerns raised by research that suggests augmented reality headsets may make complex tasks harder to complete than without any high-tech help at all. Even if Apple doesn't end up appearing in operating theaters worldwide, there's a surprising line in using R and VR for training people to do tasks before they do them in real life. There are lots of applications now using VR for training purposes, says Pan. Whether that's enough to sustain a business for Apple is still uncertain. Apple is facing a lot of competition too with Magic Leap releasing a second iteration of its goggles last year and Microsoft's HoloLens 2 already on sale. Google, however, announced in March this year that it was giving up on the latest enterprise edition of its Glass Smart Glasses, giving no indication the project will be revived. It will be interesting to see, a year or more after its introduction, if it has inspired copycats and novel user applications, says Hicks. But at this point it looks like another iteration of a technology that has largely failed to catch on with most people.